Welcome back to Harbour Unbox. Today, I'm finally benchmarking Metro Exodus. And in case you were worried that I was starting to get lazy on you guys, there is a good reason for why we're late to the party. Now, the game was only released last week, so four days ago now, but we were given a review code a few days prior to release. So we've had access for quite some time now, a bit longer than we normally would, but we're still yet to publish our big GPU benchmark. However, Tim decided to quickly check out ray tracing and DLSS performance, and after publishing that video, we caught wind that there would be a day one patch, which claimed to improve performance. Also, along with the game's release, AMD and Nvidia pushed out updated drivers, so we felt it was just best to wait. I only briefly tested the previous display drivers from each company, but as far as I can tell, the updated drivers made no real performance improvements. What did improve performance was the day one patch, so our results might differ a bit from those published earlier. Actually, I've taken a look at results published by the usual suspects, and some have shown much higher frame rates than us, while others have shown slightly lower. I believe those showing slightly lower results have tested in similar demanding sections of the game, but have done so pre-patch, while those showing much higher frame rates have made the mistake of testing in areas that aren't very demanding. Generally, performance does fluctuate quite a bit in games, depending on what's being rendered, though developers do try to optimize levels for more consistent performance. Now, I wouldn't say they've done a poor job of this with Metro Exodus, but you will see frame rates with, say, a GTX 1060 at 1080p, as high as 70 to 80 FPS in some areas, and then just 30 to 40 FPS in others. So picking where you test is really important, probably more so than usual. Helping me pick a good spot for testing, Tim recommended a demanding section that's early on in the game. He's played much further and found other demanding sections, but believes this one is very representative of how demanding the game can get. And with it being early on in the game, I don't have to invest hours playing because we all know I'd rather be benchmarking. So this means we've canned the canned benchmark in favor of an in-game 60 second pass. The benchmark takes place in Moscow. It's very early on in the campaign. It takes place after a mutated pack of wolves runs past. For testing, I'm using the Ultra preset, which sees Nvidia's hair works and advanced physics disabled by default. Tessellation though is enabled. The game also supports both DirectX 11 and DirectX 12 APIs, but performance using a Core i9-1900K was identical using either API, so that being the case, we've decided to go with DX12. For benchmarking, our standard GPU test rig was used. Built inside the Corsair Crystal 570X, it packs the Core i9-9900K clocked at 5GHz with 32GB of Vengeance DDR4-3400 memory. The latest AMD and NVIDIA display drivers were installed. For AMD, that was their Adrenaline 2019 Edition 19.2.2, and for NVIDIA, their GeForce 418.91 drivers. I think that's about everything you need to know. Let's jump into the results. Since we have 36 different GPUs here, I've created a scrolling graph. So let's start at the top and then work our way down. As you can see, the RTX 2080 Ti had no issues keeping things above 100 FPS. And while 131 FPS at 1080p isn't amazing for this extreme high-end GPU, it's better than what we've seen in titles such as Assassin's Creed Odyssey, Just Cause 4, Hitman 2, and Kingdom Come Deliverance, for example. Moving down the list, we see the RTX 2080 delivering very solid performance. Here it was 13% faster than the GTX 1080 Ti, so this title appears well optimized for Nvidia's new Turing architecture. That said, the 1080 Ti still does well, and it's seen beating the much newer Radeon 7. Meanwhile, the RTX 27 and 2060 offer very similar performance, and both were faster than not just Vega 64 Liquid, but also the GTX 1080. For those hoping for around 60 FPS at 1080p, you will require some pretty heavy GPU firepower. At the very least, a GTX 1070 or Vega 56 will be required. A Vega 56 was the faster of the two as it roughly matched the GTX 1070 Ti. Then for around 50 FPS on average, the Radeon RX 590 or GeForce GTX 1060 will work. And here we see the GTX 1060 6GB is 9% faster than the RX 580 and 14% faster than the 3GB 1060. Then anything below the RX 570 or R9 390 are deemed too slow for an enjoyable experience. This meant the weakest NVIDIA GPU you'd want to play with is the GeForce GTX 970. So like I said, the game demands some serious hardware at 1080p when using the ultra quality preset, which isn't the highest quality preset available. That would be extreme. And for those of you wondering, I will explore performance with lower quality presets a bit later on the video. But for now, let's check out how the game plays at 1440p with the ultra quality setting. 
Okay, so again, starting with the RTX 2080 Ti, we see that the average frame rate remained just over 100 FPS while the 1% load dropped down towards 90 FPS. Still, that's pretty impressive given the RTX 2080 couldn't even average 90 FPS and said it was good for 83 FPS. The Radeon 7 was 14% slower with 71 FPS, and this meant it was just 8% faster than the RTX 2070 and just 16% faster than the RTX 2060. Not great given it costs twice as much. The RTX 2060 is actually really good value here. It matched the GTX 1080 and really wasn't noticeably slower than the 2070. Vega 64 Liquid does okay, but I think it's Vega 56 that's really the standout AMD option here despite getting completely wasted by the 2060, but it is of course an Nvidia sponsored title, so probably no surprises there. Nvidia's older Maxwell GPUs are hanging in rather well. The 980 Ti matched the GTX 1070, while the 980 matched the 6GB 1060. The 6GB 1060 was also 12% faster than the RX 580, though neither were great at 1440p, it has to be said, averaging less than 40 FPS. Basically anything below the RX 580 or GTX 970 were unplayable at this resolution. Then at 4K, well, pretty much good luck here. You need an RTX 2080 Ti or you need to settle for inferior quality settings, at which point you might as well bite the bullet and just play at 1440p. The game was playable using a GTX 1080 or RTX 2060, Radeon 7 or anything better, but once you start seeing 1% low performance dipping below 30 FPS, the stuttery frame rates really do harm the experience. Now before wrapping things up, I retested 31 GPUs, many of them are not tested previously, to see if you can get away with older hardware at 1080p using the medium quality settings, with tessellation disabled and of course hairworks and advanced physics still turned off. The medium quality setting allowed the GTX 970 to average 92 FPS. This is a massive 119% performance boost over what we saw with the ultra quality preset, and similar gains were also seen with the RX 570 and R9 390. The GTX 1050 Ti saw a doubling of frame rate, and this meant it was now able to deliver highly playable performance, which was nice to see. We also see some old timers such as the HD 7970 and GTX 780 Ti offering playable performance, and boy oh boy has the 7970 aged well. Of course the R9 280X is a rebadged 7970 with a factory overclock, and therefore we also see that particular model topping the 780 Ti. Meanwhile the slowest GPUs you'll get away with include the R9 380, GTX 780, 950 and the 1050. Finally capping off the testing we have some quality preset scaling results. We've just seen how the medium quality preset offered a massive performance uplift with the older GPUs, especially those with 4GB or less VRAM. The gains with the 8GB RX 580 and 6GB 1060 aren't as extreme, but even so we saw around a 50-60% to 60 performance boost when dropping down to the medium quality preset from Ultra. What's interesting here is that the 580 and 1060 deliver basically identical performance with the low and medium quality settings. However, once we get to high, the 1060 pulls a few percent ahead and then extends that margin further with the Ultra preset. It then maintains its 9% lead with the extreme quality settings. Tessellation was enabled for all these tests while hairworks and advanced physics were disabled. I suspect the level of tessellation is increased with the ultra and extreme settings and this hands Nvidia a slight advantage. So for those of you hoping to enjoy Metro Exodus and all of its glory, you're going to need one hell of a gaming rig. To be fair though, the game does scale down quite well to accommodate older hardware, so that was nice to see, and Tim will have a detailed Metro Exodus graphical optimization video for you guys tomorrow. For now though, the quality preset scaling graph will give you a good idea of the typical performance gains you can expect to see when lowering the quality settings. For those of you with a sub $300 GPU, high quality appears to be a good choice. Also, if you have less than 4GB of VRAM, then I strongly suggest using the medium quality setting. At 1080p using the ultra quality setting, I often saw VRAM allocation reach around 3.8GB on cards with 6-8GB to of memory, and just over 4GB at 1440p, and then almost 5GB at 4K. Also, for those of you wondering, I did skip over any ray tracing or DLSS testing, as Tim's covered that already. Tim was also reasonably impressed with ray tracing in Metro. Far more so than Battlefield 5 anyway, where he believes it didn't come close to justifying the performance hit. Personally, while I don't disagree with Tim, I wasn't that impressed and really struggled to spot any differences at all. The performance hit where I tested was also more extreme than what Tim saw, whereas he observed a 29% performance hit using the benchmark tool, I saw a more extreme 39% performance hit when in-game. 
For me, a roughly 40% performance hit, which saw the RTX 2082 at 1440p drop from an average of 105 FPS to 65 FPS, is just laughably bad. Still, I agree with Tim, it's a better implementation than what we got with Battlefield 5, but that's really not saying much. Finally, it's also worth noting that the day one patch did improve performance, which is why we waited, and we would have certainly received a lot more views on this content if we went earlier, but I felt you guys would probably appreciate a more up-to-date benchmark, and I really didn't feel like testing almost 60 different graphics cards twice in the same week. Overall, the game looks great. It's highly detailed, and this is obviously a large reason for why it's so demanding, but both AMD and NVIDIA GPUs do perform very well. And although it is an NVIDIA-sponsored title, I feel like the Radeon GPUs did deliver excellent performance. I was most impressed with the older Radeon GPUs, such as the HD 7970, and that performed exceptionally well when using the medium quality setting. Anyway, that is going to do it for now. Be sure to keep an eye out for Tim's optimization guide. They're always chock full of great content. And if you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit the like button, subscribe for more content just like this. And if you appreciate the work we do at Hire Unbox, then consider supporting us on Patreon. Thank you for watching. I'm your host, Steve, and I'll see you again next time.